Up until recently, creating this effect inside of Framer was impossible without custom code. But now with the possibility of custom cursors inside of Framer, in this video, I'm going to show you how to recreate this effect from an award-winning website in minutes. Let's go. Okay, so here we are inside Framer and let's just take a look at this design really quickly. So we've got a custom cursor outside of this image. And then when I hover on this image here, we kind of have it open up with the word view and it's actually almost like a link to click. So let's actually go ahead and recreate this. So what I'm gonna do is create a new page. And on this page, we're just gonna create a new section. And let's call this frame here to be container. And then let's set the width of this to be 100% and the height to be 100 VH. So it takes up the full width and height of my browser. And then we'll just set the desktop height to be auto. And then inside here, let's draw a new frame, which we'll actually call image. And this is going to be the part where we show our image that we want to be clickable. And we're gonna show a different cursor effect. So let's just go to Unsplash and just grab a random placeholder image just for now. Cool, and we'll make sure that's centered on our canvas. And let's get rid of this background effect. So again, if we go back to our homepage here, you'll see that we've got an effect on the outside and then a different effect on the inside. So on the outside, we've essentially just got a blue circle. And then if we watch closely, when I hover over here, the circle gets bigger and some text shows. So to do this, what I'm gonna do is actually go to my page once again. We're gonna draw a new frame on the canvas and let's just set the width and height of this to be 25 pixels. And we wanna style this to be like our cursor. So we'll set that to be the blue. We'll set the radius to be 9999. And now what I actually wanna do is create this as a component and we'll call this step one. So now that I have my step one component created, I'm also going to add a variant here, which is gonna be for the state when I actually open that cursor. So I'm gonna make this a little bit bigger, let's say 50 by 50. And let's add some text in here that says click. And what we can do is just style this to be however we want. So I might keep the font as inter, but make it a little bit bolder. We might change this, the size here to be something a bit smaller. And maybe we want to center this as well, just like so. Okay, great. So now without doing too much, we can start to kind of modify how this works. So I'm going to select the container, which will be inside my desktop breakpoint. And we're going to click on cursor on the properties panel. Now, what I'm gonna do is select a custom cursor and I'm just going to search for my components. So that's gonna be step one. And we wanna make sure it's the variant one as well. Now we've got a few other settings we can do here, whether it follows or like tracks behind, or we can even add a little bit of motion to that. So if we want it to be nice and smooth or nice and jumpy, we can do that here. But for now it's fine. So let's test that out firstly. So when I actually hover on my canvas, you'll notice we have our blue dot following and that is now my cursor. And even if I go over the image, it stays the same. So what we wanna do is change that. So what I'm going to do is select the image now, and I'm going to overlay that with a different cursor. So with my image frame selected, I'm going to click on cursor and I'm going to select a custom cursor once again. And we're just going to select that step on cursor. And this time we're going to set it to variant two. So when I preview this, you notice when I don't hover on the image, it's the variant one of that cursor. But when I transition, you'll notice it will transition out to that variant number two. So this is quite powerful in terms of how we actually wanna make that happen. And then again, if I wanted to link this, all I would need to do is just select that image and then set that to be a link, which might go to my homepage. Now we can take this a little bit further. So what I'm actually gonna do is go back into this component here. Let's make this button actually a fair bit bigger. And let's make this text bigger as well. So it's a bit more punchier. And I'm going to add an effect to this as well. So let's make it that when the text appear, it actually fades in. So let's set the effect here to be up here. And let's make it that it scales in. And let's change the transition stiffness to be 150. So it's nice and smooth. And let's preview that. 
So you will notice when it actually loads for the first time, it'll kind of just fade in just like so. So now when I go back to my page and preview this, you notice I get my cursor, but when I actually hover over, both the circle fades in and becomes bigger, but the text also fades in as well. Now we could take this a step further if we wanted. And if we add, want to add say a hover state to this image, we could do so just like so. And let's make this a little bit bigger, beautiful. So now when I actually hover this, you'll notice that we get this cool sort of effect. And we did that with zero code and literally in a matter of minutes. So you can imagine the creative possibility that we can have when we actually add a little bit more time or a little bit more imagination to custom cursors inside of Framer. If you enjoyed this Framer tutorial and you want more content like this, consider subscribing to the channel because we're putting out more Framer content every single week. And if you're interested in learning and mastering Framer, check out our Ultimate Framer Masterclass, which is my A to Z course on mastering Framer. Until next time, I'll catch you later.